Welcome everyone to the Tactical Tavern. My name is Tomas Salas and in this video we are reviewing the new PowerTac M5 G2 flashlight. This light has performance that will challenge a flashlight double or even triple the price, but is all of this too good to be true? In this video we are going to answer just that question and find out if this is right for your everyday carry, outdoor adventure, or next tactical mission. With that being said, let's get right into it. Before we begin, if you love gadgets, gear, and all things everyday carry, please take a moment to drop a like and subscribe so you're the first to know of new reviews coming every Tuesday and Thursday. Now this video is not sponsored by PowerTac, however, they have seen the channel and were gracious enough to offer a discount code. Normally this flashlight runs around $70, but you can save yourself 15% off and help support the channel by using discount code TACTAB at checkout for any PowerTac light purchases. This light measures in 4.9 inches overall and only weighs in at 2.2 ounces. The head diameter is one inch while the body is a slimmer 0.9 inches. When I picked up the M5 G2 for the first time, it was very lightweight and I was even more surprised to find out the battery was already inside of it. The interface is quite easy to use and I do like the versatility of the different power outputs. The lumen settings and runtime are as follows. We have a 0.51 Firefly mode that will run for 25 days. I really enjoy that half lumen Firefly mode because in the dead of night, if you're just walking around, it's not going to blow out your night vision and it has come in especially useful while checking a map close up. The 65 lumen mode will run 23.3 hours. The 65 lumen low is a great option for saving battery and I found it especially useful for loading medical work such as checking eyes or examining a splinter in the finger. I feel that for an everyday carry setting the 260 lumen is going to be perfect for a wide variety of tasks such as looking for a dropped ring under the couch or taking your dog out for a walk at night. We'll go for 5.15 hours and the 850 lumens will get you 2.9 hours of runtime. I'm stepping it up to that real powerful output that 850 lumen setting has been amazing for like household chores when you need a prolonged period of high intensity lumens without burning through your battery or overheating the flashlight. Now that turbo 2030 lumens will run 2.65 hours. It certainly delivers on that and has an amazing hot spot that really shoots out much further than I was anticipating for the small light. And the flash strobe at 2030 lumens will run for three hours. Although the hotspot is pretty tight on this light, which I personally enjoy, the spill that comes out of it still allows you to illuminate your path and it actually makes a light duty searchlight. The color coming out of this light is a pure white light and a candela rating of 27,225. And again, if you are new to everyday carry, candela is the rating of intensity that a light is. So it could have a high amount of lumens, but a low candela rating. And it's basically focusing that light beam to make it stronger. There's a saying that enthusiasts look at lumens and professionals look at candela. This flashlight is also IPX8 water rated and has a drop resistance test of two meters. Helping aid the durability on this flashlight is tempered clear glass. And it also has a lifetime warranty. I feel that nowadays you really don't see lifetime warranties being attached to products, especially ones that are budget friendly. However, I feel that it is a pretty powerful statement in the quality and durability, as well as adding additional value when investing in this light. Now let's talk about the functionality of this M5 G2 flashlight. Switching modes is done via the rubber button that is close to the head of this light. I'm happy to report I have used it constantly for over 30 minutes during some home improvement projects. And what's nice is that it does get warm, but not uncomfortable whatsoever, which tells me it has great temperature regulation. Now, after about 2.5 minutes of continuous turbo use, it did start to get pretty hot. However, after I shut the light off, it cooled down rather quickly. To access strobe, simply press and hold down on that mode selector switch, and it does have a memory feature, so if you wanted it to be first up in strobe, you can certainly have it access that for any security or tactical or even signaling work. I found that PowerTax strobe flash setting is fantastic. It's pretty close up there to my favorite P20iX from Nightcore. Unlike the Warrior 3, it's just a little bit too slow, so this can certainly do some of that tactical signaling work if you do like using strobe. Take notice here of how concentrated the beam is, allowing you to clearly identify targets at varying distances, yet has still quite an enjoyable amount of spill. Now, here is the light compared to a Nightcore P20iX, and I classify this as more of a flood light with less of a hotspot. Next, we have a Olight Warrior 3, which certainly has that tight hotspot for shooting out to distance. Of course, we tested this light against the big brother, which is the PowerTac E9R G4. And here, I think this light dominates it by being able to shoot further. It still has great power output being a smaller light. We also had time to test this against a Surefire E2D Defender Ultra, and you can see here how these lights compare. I'm impressed because this light absolutely holds its weight in beam distance and lumens, especially when comparing it to lights that are running on 21700 batteries, which offer more power and cost double the price. What I like about the M5 G2 is that it offers a slimmer profile with similar capabilities to a larger light. This also brings me into carrying this light around, and it is much slimmer than other flashlights, as well as being much smoother. So if you compare this to the E9R G4, the texture still has some texture, but it's definitely easy to carry in dress pants, slacks, 
or any sort of attire without shredding your pockets. I'm also a fan of this being medium ride height so you can quickly access it from the pocket and get it into use as well as being able to take that pocket clip off, slap it around and make an impromptu headlamp by putting it onto a baseball cap. Now I feel that the bezel on this flashlight looks quite deceptively innocent. However, I assure you, you can absolutely use this for self-protection. I also wanted to make sure I tested the light's durability so I did drop this a few times into dirt, dust and mud and I'm happy to report that it did not flicker or fail in any way. The main activation button is rubber and offers a great solid click so you can do momentary or constant on, and it's also flat, meaning you can't tail stand this, further aiding to that versatility if you're camping or just using it in an everyday carry setting, you slap it down and then it illuminates a whole room. Now, obviously I'm a big fan of this flashlight. However, there are a couple of improvements I would make if there were to be an M5 G2 V2. For me personally, with the E9R G4, I love the location of that mode selector switch being close to the tail. That way you don't have to change your hands in order to adjust the light. Now, that being said, with practice, you can certainly press through using your pinky, but I would have loved to see that on this M5 G2. Now, you can use the magnetic charging cable to recharge this flashlight. However, if you're traveling, I really wish they had that redundant feature of being able to pull out the magnetic recharger so you can slip in a recharging cable. I love that on the E9R G4. That being said, I know this helps boost up the dust and water protection, so there is kind of a trade-off on that. If you are traveling and you do run out of battery, you can certainly throw in some CR123A batteries to get you through your trip. It is nice that there is a red light indicator you know when it is time to recharge and also it will turn blue when it is fully complete. Ultimately, this flashlight has been a very impressive piece of gear, especially considering the performance output from such a compact light and the budget-friendly price point. I have noticed myself opting to carry this more often than some of my larger tactical flashlights. It's just so easy to carry, slim, and looks very innocent, which makes it great for travel. On that same note, it's about 60 bucks, so if you do happen to lose it, you're not out a flashlight double or triple the cost. I highly recommend this flashlight to anyone heading into outdoor adventures or EDC enthusiasts, this would be a great option to start carrying a flashlight. Of course, if you're a tactical professional, this can certainly double as your primary or backup flashlight because it has a lot of versatility and capability in such a compact package. What are your thoughts on this PowerTac M5 G2 and what is your current everyday carry flashlight? I'd love to hear your thoughts and let me know what other gear you'd love to see reviewed here on the channel. If you enjoyed this video and found it valuable in any way, please make sure to drop a like, share, and subscribe because it helps grow the channel. Also, make sure to turn on post notifications so you are the first to know of new videos coming every Tuesday and Thursday. Also, follow us on Instagram at Tactical Tavern to get a behind the scenes look at new gear, the testing process, and some fun new videos you won't find here. With that being said, my name is Tomas Alas. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And remember, be prepared, be practical, stay tactical.